você que acabou de sintonizar na TV Ideal, eu sou o Carlos Melo e este é o Siga o Mestre, hoje conversando com o professor Jeffrey Leifert. Jeffrey, if I know the system, if I know the principles, and I know it is revolutionary and fantastic, let's apply it to all companies and be happy and successful forever, right? Right. This is the trick? This is the solution for all the problems? The question really is not how can I uh, copy Toyota or if I copy Toyota's principles, do I suddenly become great? But how can I create principles that become part of my culture, whatever my company is, so I too can be a high performing organization and always looking out into the future about what I want to be. The point is that even in Japan, Toyota doesn't recommend other companies try to adopt the Toyota way. They, su they, want, they suggest that they adopt their own way, but they can learn some things from Toyota, uh, and they can learn the importance of, of investing in people. They can learn some of the concepts and ideas like waste elimination, what is waste, and here are some tools for making things flow better so you don't have wasted steps in between. So there's so those kinds of tools, but seeing a company that's successful by having a long-term vision and a philosophy and taking the time to hire the right people and train them and teach them the culture, those are sorts of things that you can learn, but then you have to do them. <laughs> and it took Toyota decades, so why would it take other companies less? Professor, let me take the chance that you live in an arbor near Detroit and ask you, what is happening with the automakers in Detroit? Why have we been seeing so many crises after year after year? And uh, if we have like revolutionary techniques like Toyota Way and things like that, why is Detroit always in crisis? They're always in crisis because they have repeatedly been thinking short term. Uh, and I, I, I think it's somewhat of a disease of American companies, maybe Western com com companies, but because they're so focused on m two things. One is short-term quarterly returns. Second thing is the short-term results. Short-term yeah. results, okay. which are led by a leader, and we have this uh, cult of personality of whoever the CEO is. So when a new CEO comes in, his job is to remake the company, put his imprint on it, and introduce his own programs in his own way. So the companies are constantly starting and stopping and starting and stopping. I think if they simply had picked some kind of philosophy and improvement program back in the 1970s when they're struggling and kept stuck with that, they would be in pretty good shape today. But because they would adopt a program and at some point it was employee involvement, and another point it's uh, the Ford production system or the General Motors competitive manufacturing system, at some point it's a Kaizen program. So there's so many different programs that people just get confused. And they start and they stop. So the result is that Toyota, they like to use the term, we think of ourselves like a tortoise, just slow and steady. And our competitors are like a hare, you know, starting and stopping. So at some point, because the, uh, the American companies didn't take seriously the long term and developing and uh, and having the capability and the product line lineup needed by the, the market, they caught up with them. How do you see the future of this industry? The auto industry, uh, I think the American companies are going to become lean and small, <laughs> smaller. They're going to have to, to accept that fact. And they have a lot of momentum, so they're not going to disappear. Uh, but they're going to become smaller, and they recognize that, that and uh, they are now suddenly investing in only small cars and crossover vehicles and not big gas guzzlers. Uh, so I, and they have, uh, there's been enough shakeup and layoff in the companies uh, that I think they are making a pretty fundamental change in their culture, like right now. Uh, so I think that they're gonna be better prepared after coming out the other end of this, which probably will take them uh, three to five years and than they were going into it. Uh, I think that'll happen, but they're gonna be weaker than they are. And in the meantime, companies like Toyota and Honda uh, and 
even Nissan that struggled, they're continuing to invest in new technology and they have a lot of the same people who've been running for decades still running the company. So they're gonna just keep on going like the tortoise. And uh, the American car companies are trying to stop themselves from falling off a cliff and dying. When you say the Japanese culture, can we assume that this is the Far East culture? We see Korea right now investing heavily in the automaking uh, business. Uh, China in the future. Is this a region culture or specifically Japan? They're, each country has their own culture and Toyota has been much more successful than other Japanese companies as well. A lot of Japanese companies have gone through ups and downs in the last uh, 20 years and, uh, compared to Toyota. So somewhat it's Toyota's culture. Uh, I think that Toyota's culture does reflect a lot of characteristics of Asian culture, which are shared by China and shared by, by Korea. Uh, and that includes uh, long-term thinking. They're certainly longer term than, than we are in the West. Uh, it also includes the value placed on teamwork. It also includes the value placed on relationships and on developing people and training people and kind of banding together to look at yourself as a competitive force. We haven't spoken about Europe. How is this region adapting to the Toyota way and uh, how is the automaking in Europe doing? There, the automakers in particular are still struggling. There's a few exceptions. One that, that really that went through a near-death experience and came out well was Porsche. And Porsche is this little sports car company, family owned, and they almost went out of business, but they adopted the Toyota production system very vigorously. And Kaizen and Kanban and uh, Flow and standardized work and everything that's in the Toyota production system, they just brought into the company very aggressively over a few years. And they turned around the company. They're doing well enough that they've since bought Volkswagen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So uh, that's a success story. Mercedes was being kind of dragged down like a weight by Chrysler, and they've let go of that weight, and they seem to be doing okay. BMW has been kind of humming along. BMW has uh, got such a strong brand, such good engineering. They're now adapting their version of the Toyota production system, but that's adopting the, the method while they're doing well. Uh, but across Europe, I can tell you my books uh, are doing really well in Europe and it was really slow. They were like three years behind uh, the West. They were behind the Portuguese version in wanting to translate the book. And that reflects the, their kind of lag time in becoming interested in the Toyota way. But now it's really popular across all of Europe and in every industry imaginable. I go to Europe uh, about once every six weeks. Uh, and there's a lot of companies there that are in kind of niches, like if you look at Sweden, or if you look at uh, Spain and Italy, or if you look at uh, uh, even Germany, there's a lot of places where long-term thinking is actually more natural, I think, than in the United States, and where companies started family-owned, and then they have a little bit more of the philosophy, particularly in a country like Sweden, where they have a little bit more of a people-oriented philosophy like Toyota, and they're really eating this stuff up. Professor, thank you very much for your time and thank you for all the information you've given us. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. Take care. E o Sigo Mestre dessa semana vai ficando por aqui. Quer mandar sua sugestão, quer falar com a gente? Então mande um e-mail, sigomestre.idealtv.com.br. Muito obrigado pela sua audiência e até a próxima semana. Thank you very much. How do you like it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Quando conhecesse um novo poder de conversar, tá vendo? Drop of the mental can